Hi, welcome to Retro Tech. Last time we spent about 20 minutes going over a lot of features on a Sony PVM. And again, this model is a 1953 MD, but these techniques will work pretty much exactly the same way for a comparable 20M2, 14M2, any of the Olympus monitors, any of the N6 monitors, any uh, monitor that has a menu, and then you can press the menu and then the degauss and enter button and if it pulls up that sub menu then it can use these uh, calibration techniques so last time we went through the geometry this time we're going to go through the rest of the settings we didn't cover as well as some things on the front of the monitor and we'll go through what each one of these knobs actually does and uh, basically how to operate all the functions on the front of your pvm we're using composite video input on a S Super Nintendo. The reason I'm using composite is there are many of these settings that use the dials in the front of the monitor that will not affect things on component input or RGB and we will go through exactly what items do affect which inputs and composites a great example because basically that is affected by all um, almost all the uh, buttons will affect composites. So if we're back here, let's kind of look at first things first. Down here on the front of the PVM, we're going to go through the input buttons real quickly. Obviously here we've got line A and B, which line A is the composite input which is activated. It's highlighted by the LED behind it, which means it's the one been use. Then we've got B, which if we click it, it immediately switches over to our other input. And then it says RGB slash component, and we've got a line A and a line B for that. Okay? And then if you look down there next time, sometimes you'll see this split button right there next to RGB component. And all that does is it allows you to have both the pictures for line A and B if you have things coming in at the very same time. Uh, it'll let you split those pictures and put half of the bottom screen be one input on the RGB and half on the top. Now that's pretty much useless for anything we would use, but that is what it does. It was useful for medical tests. If you took a picture with one device, you could then turn around and take a picture with another device and see uh, what was going on. So under those buttons, you can see the overscan and the underscan button, which we'll use right here and back up a little bit. We we'll use those buttons right now, and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you have an underscan, that's going to give you that smaller picture. I haven't adjusted this one yet, so you can see it's really wonky, but that does show you how the underscan works. Also, you have the overscan button, which, as you can see, it expands the size on that picture. And then there's this reset button, which that's pretty much only going to do affect anything if you need to reset from the menu. You see how it's got a line going all the way over here to your menu which we'll go through again. And then lastly, you've got a button over here called Degauss, which as you can see, scrambles your screen, and that actually helps your screen if you end up with any color discoloration uh, from maybe magnetism or uh, something. And I've even had places in uh, my house where some weird amount of electricity uh, causes some kind of magnetism to make parts of my screen go a little bit color change for no reason other than I can't figure out why there's magnetism but I move the screen out of the way to another spot and hit the degauss and it clears up anything pretty much on colors you might need a stronger degauss we'll go through a little bit more on degauss in a future episode and some more degaussing equipment so that's pretty much it for the front buttons on there I want to go through these knobs a little bit because they're 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 gonna do different things the first one you see on here is aperture and that is going to be hard to notice on the camera, but that's actually just considered sharpness. Sharpness. So that's only going to increase sharpness on your picture. I'll turn the sharpness up for this. But this, again, will not affect your RGB. This will work on component and composite and uh, S-video, but not RGB. RGB does not have any kind of sharpness input. So that you need to know. That won't make any difference to your RGB picture. Brightness, 
Brightness is pretty self-explanatory. It just increases the brightness levels of your screen. And then let me move a little bit back. The next on the uh, dials is chroma. And chroma is considered color intensity. So if you turn it up, do you see how intense that red just got? And that washes out your colors though, but what that works, that does again only works on composite, component, and S-video. You won't have any reaction from that dial on your RGB input. It will just increase the color intensity on the others. So if you'd like to be able to make those kinds of adjustments, just remember that's only going to be available on those other inputs. The next one is phase. And phase actually will only alter NTSC inputs. So that means just composite and just S-video. And anything else is that's not NTSC won't have won't have no reaction to that. But that is basically, let's go to a color screen and maybe we can see what that will exactly do. That's supposed to change the, uh, yeah, you can see. It gives you kind of a different hue of your color where it just completely takes it to different, uh, more greens and then more purples is what the manual actually says. And then you've got contrast, which just is a little bit like brightness, just increase and decrease contrast, and then volume control, of course. So, just again to note, only brightness and contrast will work on RGB and volume. Any of those other dials will not affect your RGB picture. They will work on nearly all the other inputs, like component, except for phase, it will not work on component. It will have no reaction on component. So the next thing I wanted to get to was a couple more things in the sub-menu. Let's get... I've gotten back out to, and I've switched it to input B so that I have nothing signaled into this input on the monitor, just so I can easily see my menu. Again, to access the sub-menu like we did in the last video, press the menu once, and that'll pull up your regular menu, and then you can press the enter and the Gauss. But I did want to cover a couple things on the regular menu before we do that. Now on this regular menu, you can see that we talked a little bit color temperature. This one's currently set on the user color temperature. This one, and you might have a third one, and uh, depending on your monitor or less. If you have a color temperature settings, are again just kind of a color palette. And they're already, all these three are already just programmed into the memory of your PVM you can go in just like you can with the geometry settings we'll show you the settings on the sub menu that will control the color setups for these you can go in there and use a color screen to uh, adjust the colors and try to dial in the colors on each palette for the way you like them so let's get back out of here the only other thing that's important is down here the very last go down to config and chroma setups not important but these two RGB system setups are important if you remember on the back we talked about how line A and line B on the RGB and component inputs could be switchable between RGB and component this is how you switch them you basically hit enter on there and it gives you this menu you can either have RGB with sync built into the green line I believe that will be or in, interior sync and then external sync is what you're going to do most of the time if you're running uh, RGB then you have the same options with component but with component you're not going to do an ex external sync because you don't have a fourth sync line so to switch to component for example you're going to use the component INT sync setting but to change it, you would just go down there, click it, click enter, and exit back out. And the same thing over here, you can change these. And I'll run a demo on that next time when we go through and calibrate this monitor fully. But that's how you switch through and change it to whatever you want to. Again, you hit enter when you're done, hit menu again to exit back out of that, menu to exit back out of that. That's pretty much all from that menu. Let's go ahead and hit enter and degauss now and go into our sub menu.
Back here covering uh, these settings, number 31 right after all our geometry is subphase on component. So just to show you an example, this says the line or whatever, um, it might also say something else, but what we're, what we're altering and uh, also what we're altering is the subphase on the component line. So we're not actually using component on this, but uh, if you want to use this, this might get you a little bit of color adjustment. Uh, it's not even guaranteed that it will because it said phase won't affect component at all. So this may just be a, a setting that's in there that really does nothing. I've never really used it much, so I usually go past it. Uh, the same thing with these other settings. If I have a big component or um, it, you know color problem, I might come through these settings and see if I adjust any of these settings on, uh, it says the input again, which line it's using. So example, NTSC, that would be my composite and as video lines. If I had a problem on those lines, I would check this a little bit uh, for my color and brightness settings. Otherwise, these aren't going to be the major concerns for me because they aren't going to have a huge effect on what I'm seeing. And there's the PAL settings. Now you're getting in here, you see this C slash T. This is the 6500K color temperature. These are the settings for the color that uh, I talked about earlier in the regular menu. This is what the built-in settings for those actually is. Some of these you can't even affect and make a change. Others you can. Uh, but that, if you change that, that's going to, and then write it to memory like we did by pressing DGOS twice if you like a setting. Right, right. That's going to reprogram your memory for uh, your new setting on your color temperature. So you can still go in there and change that even though it's a preset. But I don't really run into too often where you have to make these adjustments only if the color is very bad on a, ma on a monitor. Then you can definitely go in and change your gain and it'll have an effect on the picture. Sometimes it can be really, the settings can be really messed up. Same thing here, if you keep scrolling you'll get to the second color temperature, which here says gain and blue. So it goes through each color. Now I'm at the user color temperature. And then there's some settings I can't adjust that have been grayed out, really. Uh, the same thing, gain red, green, blue. Now we're getting something that we can adjust that can make something show up here. So I'm going to put it back on the screen. Our next setting is called subcontrast. This is the a monitor's original setting for contrast. Uh, without using the dial. So if you're using the dial and you're, you're still seeing, you're seeing too much contrast when you have it set in the neutral position or you're not seeing enough contrast, uh, you can come here to subcontrast and increase that or decrease that to however you want. And if you need it a little bit more, you just write it to memory. So that is how you do that subcontrast, and then you can use your dial a little bit more, a little bit more effectively. The next setting is going to be sub bright, same thing. It's the brightness setting, it's the preset for the brightness. So if you get too much brightness, too little brightness, you can tell right away uh, you need to come to this setting and add a little bit more brightness to your screen. If it looks really, really dim to begin with, you can go do that and see if that helps at all. A good thing to look for on this brightness screen with this particular color bar is these three lines that are in between these two black cubes right here on this calibration screen. If you can faintly see these three different uh, strips, then that means you've pretty much got your brightness as good as it should be for that particular input. I'm not sure if you can really see that very well on the uh, phone screen, but in person, just look for it. Uh, if your monitor is below 600 TV lines, you may not see that, though. The other ones are this OSD position, which is generally just, um, if you can see up there, it just changes the positioning of this menu, you know, the way it looks right to left on the screen. That's not really that important. Uh, split phase. V-hold. V-hold is for your, uh, if you're having scrolling issues. They used to be on dials on the older monitors. It doesn't really happen, but if you do have scrolling happening, uh, I've not really encountered it really on these monitors, but there is an adjustment for that in case you ever do see that. Uh, horizontal blanking 
and vertical blanking and upper lower vertical blanking. There's these weird red lines. You can see them really well um, if I get out of here and I go to the uh, under scan mode. You can say sometimes there will be these red, green, and blue lines at the top of your screen. And uh, that, that blanking should affect those lines some. Now you've got to get it on the right setting and you'll notice that but one of them, you know, it'll affect that. This one's in good position. If those, if the, sometimes those lines will creep down here and get into the top of your picture and then you can use those settings to to help with that screen. Let's get back here to the regular screen and get past these. A lot of these the rest of these settings are not uh, too important. Um, these are just color display, color temperature. So you can use this to change your color temperature setting between the three color temperatures that we talked about earlier. You can still change that through this, but uh, there's nothing really to language. You can change your language. Um, RGB mode we talked about. That's just another way to change that on the main menu. You can change it in the sub-menu too. Aging mode doesn't really do anything right now. Color temp display that just shows what the number is besides the color temperature setting. And a lot, like I say, a lot of this stuff, just the rest of these, it's not important. It's nothing really to make an adjustment to your picture. That pretty much covers it. That's almost everything I can think of on the settings for the monitor. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions or if there's anything I forgot, I'll be glad to come in and talk about it a little bit more. The ultimate plan for this monitor you see here will be a restoration project in a future video where I'm wanting to basically take the whole thing, tear it completely apart, redo it. Uh, and we'll even put some different paint on it and even mess around with some different body uh, capping so we can give this a completely different look. I hope you uh, liked the video. Please stay tuned for more. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching Retro Tech. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching Retro Tech.